Hi, I'm back. And in this video, I'm going to hopefully quickly show you how you can use Zoom to record to Zoom's cloud. So if you wanted to project your lecture or your class within a Zoom room synchronously and or record it for asynchronous presentation uploading to your iLearn site for your students, this is another option that you have. So this is kind of like the companion recording option to the video I did yesterday that's how to record your Zoom meeting or presentation or lecture locally to your own hard drive. So this is using Zoom's cloud to record. So I'm in my Zoom room and I'm the only one in here. I have the meeting locked, which you can see up here. You can check up here really quickly uh, so that no one can come in and interrupt this recording. I come down here to more. So I have record options. Sometimes it'll display in that bottom control panel. Sometimes if my window is too narrow, I just go to more and find these options. Today I want to record to the cloud. So I'm going to ask it to record everything that's happening in my Zoom room to the cloud recorder or to Zoom's cloud, sorry. And I'll walk you through a couple different things in the settings. And then I will show you how you can go access the files, the recorded files that Zoom will create for you in the cloud, download them. And then another video, Eddie and I will show you how to take your downloaded, recorded lecture videos and make them accessible to students through iLearn. So this is just another option for like where to put your recorded video files whenever you're going to like uh, keep track of what's happening in your classroom. Uh, okay, so I'll show you some of the preferences through my Zoom app, and then most of them for this option are actually in the web page version instead, so we'll go there in a second. Uh, okay, recording. Now I'm doing cloud recording. So actually, there are no options for me to use in the app. I have to go directly to the web. Let's see. Let's see if I can show you both. Maybe. Okay, let me. Okay, so what I have in the web page of my Zoom account are uh, this is actually the page that shows the existing recordings. If I make it a little bigger, I have all these options. So I'm going to click on <clears throat> recordings, and then over here I can go to settings. And now I have more options for the cloud recording portion. So you can see all these here. And I'll kind of try to explain why I have certain things checked and not checked. Uh, OK, so a bunch of us have been messing around with this to try to figure out what the different views are actually recorded. If you ask it to record active speaker with shared screen versus gallery view with shared screen, active speaker with shared screen basically toggles through whoever is speaking or making the most noise. Uh, and you can share your screen and still have active speaker going. So if you're presenting material, active speaker would probably be you, especially if you had the rest of your class muted. Um, but sometimes if you are having a discussion or a group participation to try to figure something out like we've been doing, I've been asking it to record the gallery view instead of the active speaker. But for classes, probably you want to check this one, record active speaker with shared screen. There's probably no need to record active speaker gallery and shared screen separately. It gives you like the breakdown of those options if you do want to request that. I wanted to record an audio only file. We are still trying to figure out the best way to get uh, ADA compliance for a lot of the different approaches people are taking. An audio only file might be easier to transcribe offline. So I wanted to create that for me as well. And if there's any chat messages happening during the entirety of the meeting, I want it to give me a text file of all the chat log as well. So if a student asked a question via chat and somehow I didn't get to it, I could circle back, use that for like a discussion board posting or an iLearn announcement or something uh, as needed later in the week. The advanced cloud recording settings are pretty useful. So you can add a timestamp to the recording just so you can keep track of like which class, which lecture, which date it is. That's a good idea. Um, have participants names display in the recording. So if you have someone asking you a question or you're looking at gallery view or um, they're not on video or you can't recognize your students by sight yet because it's a little harder to get to know them from this uh, remote learning approach, you can have their names show on the recording. That's helpful to keep you on track with like who is who talking to you. Record thumbnails when sharing. So if you are sharing your screen, this is a really good idea for us. If you want to share your screen, share PowerPoint or slides, uh, the recording will include a thumbnail of your video floating over top of it. So we do want that. You could click optimize for third party video editor. I'm not doing any third party video editing yet, but we might make that recommendation a little bit further down the line. 
audio transcript again we really we wanted to do this this is different than uh up here the audio only file i'm still waiting to see what this is going to do so we had a zoom meeting a couple days ago i asked for an audio transcript to be generated when the meeting was finished um it still says it's pending or it still says transcribing over that so i don't know if it's actually going to create anything that'll be useful for ADA closed captioning compliance issues or not, but I will make sure we add that into the recommended workflow if it does generate an audio transcript that's usable. So it's doing something automatically, but it's taking a little bit longer to do it. And then panelists chat to the recording. Okay, other options down here. I will probably enable these when I start teaching, but I haven't done this yet because I, I don't need these now. Automatic recording, I'll probably automatically have my Zoom room record my classes, my class meetings, so that I don't uh, one day inadvertently forget and lose an entire day's worth of material that I cannot make asynchronously available to my students after the class. Uh, you can you can set you can lock your room down, you can rock, lock your recordings down uh, in a lot of different ways. Um, I would not recommend telling it to delete your cloud recordings unless you are absolutely sure that you have a good process for having the recordings from your meetings go to Zoom's cloud, which you will then download when they're available, and then you'll put somewhere else, like in your Google Drive, and then you'll have the iLearn link to your videos linked to the Google Drive version, not to Zoom's cloud recording. I would just say, don't tell it to delete anything automatically at this point until you figure out exactly how you're going to do it. This is really nice. So you can add a disclaimer. This uh, is something to think about for sure. So California is a two-party consent state. We are not supposed to video record or audio record people without their knowledge and consent, uh, even for classroom purposes. So you could include a disclaimer. You can tweak exactly what it says. Um, where you're asking your students, you're informing your students that you're going to be recording the class, video recording and audio recording the class. So they have to say, okay, when they come into the room. And then this will just ping people if they come in a little bit late to remind them that things could be recorded. Okay, so those are all the settings for the cloud recording. Um, this is pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, I want to amend something I said in the video yesterday about local recording. I'll try to put this in the comment section of that YouTube video too. Things don't take as long as we were afraid. So this, in the last couple days, I don't know if we just were doing things a little bit wonky or like the process got a little faster. I, it doesn't really matter, but like the cautions we were giving people about it taking quite a long time to generate your recorded Zoom files. It, or maybe a little premature. So maybe people don't need to worry about that. It seemed like after I did the local recording how-to video yesterday, the local recording itself was available really soon after I was done. So it doesn't need to be a thing where you worry about it taking hours and hours. I think local recording is gonna still be faster than the Zoom cloud recording, uh, but the Zoom cloud recording gives you all these other features that your local recording doesn't, including potentially something really valuable, which is the audio transcript, the automatic audio transcript. So um, you have either option, you can use either one. I'll report back in the comments for this video uh, how long it takes to actually generate all the files that I need for this. And eventually we'll have a video explaining what to do with the audio transcript. But this should be more than enough to get you started with different options for recording if you're gonna use Zoom as your broadcast format. And good luck, we'll be back later with more stuff.